Hello guys, so what we're expecting on this video, this video is full guide on how we maximize and maintain the usage of our egg incubator. After the slides, there would be a video guide that shows how to use it and maintain it. Without a further ado, let's get started. The purpose of the egg incubation guide is to aid clients or users how to properly use, manage, and maximize the usage of waterless egg incubator. The slides also included pictures, diagram, and step-by-step -step process to make sure that we maintain the high percentage of hatching rate. The rainy and dry seasons here in the Philippines fits right for waterless egg incubator. We base our observation on the laying hen as we observe the hen is dependent on the surroundings to get moisture for humidity. We observe as well the hen body temperature is ranging to 37.5 to 39 degrees Celsius. Due to this observation, the best place for an egg incubator is an enclosed area with a room temperature. Breeders here in the Philippines having difficulty hatching chicks especially to chickens, ducks, quails, and turkey. Having a personal incubator is quite expensive and some of them goes to the incubator services to hatch their eggs. The problem is the hatching rate is not that good and if they sum up their expenses, they are losing lots of money. Just to clarify here, not all incubator services are the same, there are good ones with good feedback. Stating the facts, the waterless egg incubator is low in electricity consumption, less hassle to maintain, consistent high hatching rate, manual egg turning and species. This picture shows that the user is making or buying an incubator for the purpose of hatching eggs to produce results. The presentation shows the full life cycle starts with breeding, the incubation and the results. First, let's start with breeding. Here the breeding process, we have phases here. We have the selection, preconditioning and pairing. Here the selection, we have categories here. First is health. Before we breed them, we should make sure that they're in good health and no deformities. The age should be nine months above and you should prepare them for two to three weeks before breeding. The bloodline for history check. Here in preconditioning, preconditioning before you breed, you have to delouse them, deworm, and provide supplementation. Make sure the multivitamins as well uh, you provide with ADE and uh, the pellets that you're using would be breeder pellets. Then we breed. Here in the incubation process, before we place the eggs in the incubator, we disinfect them and keep them in a cool dry place. The eggs we accumulate in a week, we note them as first batch. The next eggs that we gather would be the second batch and so on. As we observe, the longer you keep the eggs, slowly affecting the hatching rate. For best result, eggs age 7 to 10 days. We mark the eggs X and the opposite side circle and we turn them 3 to 4 turns a day. Every turn is not less than 6 hours. If you're busy, 2 turns a day is also acceptable. In the 18th day, we stop the turning of the eggs. To be specific in the chicken, the first candling we apply is in the 10th day and the second candling in the 14th day of the incubation. Take note as well, every hatching of your batch eggs, please do remind to disinfect the incubator. Here's the flow chart of the result. It helps to isolate the problem. So you have conditions here to follow. So here's the start. So let's check this, the hatching rate. If it's above 80%, then we're good. Yes, that's the end of it. And uh, if the expectation is not that high, then we identify the problem possible that the incubator is not working fine or there's something wrong with your breeding materials. So we end here and we go back to uh, if the paired material is not matched then we change the pairs. Here's the sample of the client feedback. If you like the video please don't forget to like and subscribe. This is how we use this incubator. We place a cloth inside. Just make sure it's not a glossy type uh, cloth. Use cloth, uh, just make sure it's clean, that's good. And the placement of the eggs would be like this. So if I'm in this position, it's vertical. So you have to, like a parallel, it's attached with each other. 
and then uh, no worries I will uh, provide some samples how it looks like like the eggs inside uh, just to make sure uh, this is on the hole right here so just make sure that this is the sensor that controls the temperature it's touching the eggshell touching like this or a top on the top of it but not underneath okay so after that we turn on the incubator okay let's uh, try again we turn on the incubator just uh, take note that the range of this incubator is 37.5 up to 38 so basically it's trying to automatically automatically turn off if it reaches 38 degrees celsius and automatically turn on when it reaches 37.5 and below so you have to warm up this around 5 to 10 minutes again just make sure that the sensor is touching the shell okay. the range the range of heat is required for this incubator when the eggs are, are placed is should be should be 37.5 up to 38 so if it's just maintaining on 37.6 37.7 that's good as long it covers that heat so if you're done uh, doing a warm-up place the adapter for the blower as ex uh, just to set your expectation that the temperature would uh, go down because fresh air would be sucked in and uh, as I mentioned, the heat should be on that range, okay, 37.5 up to 38 degrees Celsius. Just to sh make, uh, just to note as well that there are the there are changes in the temperature in the morning, and the afternoon, evening, and early morning, okay. So the crucial there is setting up the temperature of this, if it's evening and late morning so in the morning there's no such problem so how we will maintain the temperature we just have to cover the holes here if in case it doesn't reach the temperature that we're aiming okay and if it doesn't reach again at the evening we just have to add a cover here it may depends on you if you're gonna use cloth paper uh, just don't use duct tapes okay so for instance that at night okay in the evening as you observe that if if there's no cover it's just stuck on 37.2 so again we have a goal that should maintain 37.5 above okay so we have to cover this and then we will check in early morning so that would be around 1 a.m. or 4 a.m. in the morning if it reaches the standard temperature for this incubator if it doesn't hit the standard temperature so we have to add cover here so we now know that at your place enable for us to reach the the standard temperature of the waterless incub egg incubator at night we have to place two at night and early morning we have to cover these two sides okay so what i do here on my end uh, at more at morning um sorry in the morning i will check if there's no cover like that and if it can reach a certain temperature then i'm good if not then i will add here so uh, in the morning i know that there should be remaining cover covers here on both two sides of the wall of the hole so i know now as well that if it's evening and early morning i have to add another covers here so on my end around 5 pm i just have to cover here on both sides then i don't have to wake up in the early morning okay because i know now that that's the, the the covers is enough to reach the standard temperature based on my area this is also a indoor type 
egg incubator and should be placed on a room temperature so that's it again guys uh, just to take note don't forcefully uh, try to make it quick to reach the temperature okay just wait for 10 to 15 minutes then before you add covers here okay because I observed some of my clients before they forcefully uh, place covers on the hole and then of course it would um, compress the the heat inside and it quickly um, heat the standard temperature but that is not the right practice okay so we should be like a, a hand laying hand it should be natural as possible okay don't force by covering the hole to to reach to reach the temperature that uh, this is your hatching day of your chicks okay so for example a chicken so that would be 21 days uh, allowance of two days that will be 23 days so for that instances uh, you, that's the time that you will disinfect okay so you have to remove the the cloth that you place inside and uh, the eggs the remaining eggs for example that would be your second batch uh, you have to place that on an egg tree and then you just have to clean this clean uh, a blower or a cloth uh, to remove the the feathers the small feathers and then what i usually do okay this spray this is a uh, disinfectant uh, family guard you may use lysol as well So it's already been disinfected. And then what I will do, so I'll place uh, outside heat by the sun. So around five to ten minutes ten minutes this would be dry up because it's alcoholized based disinfectant. So after that, gonna cool it, okay, and then place back again with a new cloth, a new clean cloth, and place back the second batch eggs inside. So that's it. That's how you disinfect every hatch. You have to disinfect. Don't ignore it. Um, it's not helping you out if you're. Uh, ignoring this infection of the incubator it will affect your hatching rate even you do priming make sure the age is right of your uh, breeding materials it will affect because it will breed uh, the bacteria okay it will breed the bacteria inside the incubator if it's not disinfected